Hello, hello, everybody. Hello, good afternoon, good evening. All right. So today I am I am starting something. I'm trying something different. I'm going live on my iPad here because last few times I did it on the phone, I had some issues. I couldn't see your comments or anything like that. So I'm on my iPad. Hopefully, I can see you guys. So. Welcome, welcome. Today we are going to discuss how to get started with investing with just $1,000, okay? So some of you guys have, you know, obviously way more than $1,000 that you can invest in. So this is for you, right? So the same thing you could do with $1,000, you can also do with $2,000, you could do with $20,000, you could do with $100,000, and so on and so forth, okay? So uh, those of you who are watching live, go ahead and type in live and those of you who are watching on the replay um because i'm going to tag you in the replay because you asked nicely i will um definitely you can you can go ahead and type in replay okay i'm trying to type and talk at the same time so i'm here live from you from miramar okay i see the comments that's what i'm talking about okay so from now on i'm doing my lives with the iPad. Forget the phone, all right? My little Samsung phone. I love my Samsung phone, but we're going to have to put it to rest and just use the iPad, okay? All right. I see Angela, Sandy. Hello, beautiful. Uh, Gigi, how are you? One of my first students. Well, yes, one of my earlier students. How are you? I got to check on you. I want to see how you're doing. I know you were killing it with Target way back then. Now Target is all through the roof. So I hope you still have Target, by the way. Uh, Gigi is watching. Megan. Megan, you made it. All right. Uh, Michelle. All right. Who else? Hello, Curleen. Rachel. Hello, Queen. Sandra. Angela. Hello, everybody. All right. Hello. Hello, Michelle. Okay, guys. Uh, so, <laughs> yes, Gigi, I saw you. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. So, you guys, go ahead and type in any questions that you have so that I make sure, now that I can see your comments, so go ahead and drop any questions that you have, and I will make sure to go over it throughout my lecture here, okay? And we're going to get started. What time is it? 8.04. Oh, we're going to get started in about one minute, okay? We usually take uh <laughs> Tevin, thank you thank you i'm trying something new you know <laughs> i got i hey if i'm gonna do these more often i gotta look like something right okay beautiful beautiful i got my lights i got my background i'm ready for you guys okay um all right all right so what are some questions you guys have I know you're here to learn about uh, how to start investing with just $1,000, all right? Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you, like my head wrap. The, this is actually handmade in Ghana. I import jewelry um, like these and head wraps from Ghana, and I sell them online as well. So that business is currently on pause because we had some importing issues because of COVID. But when I bring it back up, I will definitely let you guys know, okay? Alrighty, so is it 8.05 yet? Let me see. Yep, it is 8.05. All right. So today, um, those of you who are watching on the replay, you could fast forward to, what is this, like minute three, minute four, or something like that. Usually, I give about five minutes to let everybody trickle in. So Tevin says, hello, Rose. Hello, Queen. Tevin says, should I buy Dogecoin or is it too late? Okay. So actually, this is more of a trading question, and I'm glad you asked that. So I will cover that, Okay. Um, Sandy says, what's the best app to use for starting? Okay, so actually, I wasn't going to cover that, but I'm glad you asked. So I will cover that. Um, let's see, where should I cover that? I got my handy dandy notes here so I can stay organized. If not, I will ramble all over the place and not really say anything valuable. Well, I always say something valuable, but you know what I mean. Um, okay, so you want to know what app to use. Let's see, where can I put this in my notes? Uh, okay, we're going to talk about, when I talk about taxes, we're going to talk about brokerage accounts. Perfect. Okay, so brokerage accounts. All right, let's see. Who else? Um, do, 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 do. Nobody else? All right, so any questions you guys have, go ahead and drop them in the comments. I will make sure to go over it as I'm speaking. All right, so as you guys know, all right, I hope that I sound like a broken record. I hope I sound like a broken record because a lot of you guys get on the phone with me. You call me, you say, hey, cat, I don't know how to get started. Well, here's how you get started. 
You guys ready? Those of you taking notes, okay? The first step to investing, okay? The first step, I'm gonna repeat it. Hi, Suzette. The first step to investing is to decide why are you investing? I'm gonna repeat that. The first step to investing is to decide why are you investing? What is your why? Why are you investing? Why are you putting $1,000 into whatever it is? What is the goal? Okay, is it retirement? Is it college savings for your kids? Is it a large purchase? Is it to open a business? Is it to put down on a house? Okay, is it to buy a car? Is it residual income to make an extra four or five hundred dollars a month or even a four or five thousand dollars a month? Okay, what is the goal? What are some examples? Go ahead. Let's uh, now that I can see your comments, now we're gonna actually interact. So, what are some examples of your goals? What are some of your goals? Tevin says, buy a home. Okay, I'm glad you said that. Beautiful. So now that we define the goal, all right, go ahead, keep keep dropping your goals here. Dro drop them, drop them. All right, we're family here. Can we have a oh, yes, of course. Oceani says, can we have more than one goal? Absolutely. Yes, you can. I want you to have more than one goal, right? Good question, okay? All righty. Income, retirement, okay? So once you decide, so most of the people that I talk to on the phone, there's three big reasons why they're investing. Three. Number one is retirement. Everybody should be investing for retirement. Actually, most people are already investing with, with for retirement. You heard of the word 401k, 43b? Uh, 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 what's another TSP, right? If your company offers those things, that is an investment account. It's not a savings account. It's not some money that the company's saving for you. It is being invested in the market. Okay. So yes, the number one goal is retirement. Number two goal is kids. Cause most of you guys in here, you're older, you have kids, you have a family. You want to give your kids a head start in life. You want to uh, uh, them to be able to go, to go to Harvard if they want to. You want them to buy a car. You want them to have play money, you know, just to buy, fill up their fridge here once in a while, right? A lot of you guys are investing for your kids. And the third is to buy a home. Believe it or not, a lot of people get on the phone with me. They want to buy their first home. These are all legitimate reasons, okay? But Victoria says, build generational wealth. I'm glad you said that, okay? That's another thing that I get on the phone. A lot of times, hey, cat, I want to make money. Hey, cat, I need, I want to make ge uh, build generational wealth. Hey, cat, I want to leave uh, uh, something behind for my kids, okay? Extra income, okay? When you say things like that, let me give you an example. If I tell you guys, all 55 of you watching here, and I said, hey, guys, we're headed to Ghana. OK, we're going to go on a trip to Ghana and we're going to have some fun. We're going to go to the beach. We're going to eat some jollof rice. Let's go. OK, and I grab all of you guys. We fly to Ghana. All right. And then we land at the airport and we just put Ghana on the uh, on the GPS. We just put Ghana on the GPS. Are we going to get to our Airbnb or our hotel? OK, if all we, we get to the airport, we're excited. We're ready to go to the beach. We're going to go visit Africa. What does Africa have to offer all of the sites and everything? We're excited and we can't wait to get to our Airbnb. And all we put is Ghana and the GPS. Are we going to get to our Airbnb? I'm going to I'm going to wait for you guys. OK, are we going to get to the Airbnb? If OK, let's see. I'm going to give you guys. All right. So I'm going to wait for you guys to answer. Wealth for my nephews, okay, immediate would be to pay off IVF because you can't afford $20,000 cash and I'm running out of time. Okay, nice, good job, nice. Okay, I got the company 401k, say it's not worth it or should I go keep investing? Okay, Tevin, you got a lot of questions. Okay, Michelle says, heck no, okay? We're not gonna get to our Airbnb, why? What are we missing? If we just put Ghana on the GPS, what is it that we're missing? Okay, what do we need to get to our Airbnb? I'm gonna wait for you guys. What are we missing to get to the Airbnb? When we put it on the GPS, what do we need to put on the GPS to get to the Airbnb? Okay, I'm gonna go through the comments here. Extra income, early retirement, wealth for my son, generational wealth, IRAs, and so on and so forth. Okay, so the address, ding, 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 ding. Michelle and Sandra says the address. Latoya says the address. Absolutely. You need the address. 
It's the same thing with your finances, okay? And I've said this on so many lives. I literally, I watch my lives over and over to kind of critique myself and what I can do better on and what I can do. You know, like, hey, this is a business, right? I got to get better, right? And I literally say the same thing every single live, every single. But you know what? There's new people in the group. And sometimes you just need to hear stuff over and over before it actually sinks in. So I'm going to be that broken record for you, okay? All right? Telling me you want to build generational wealth is not a goal. That is the same thing as me telling you, hey, well, let's go to Ghana, and I put Ghana in the GPS. Yes, we ended up in Africa. Yes, we ended up in Ghana. But what does it look like? What type of experience do you want to have in Ghana? Right? Do you want to go to Kumasi? Right? Do you want to go to Accra, which is the capital of it? What do you want to do in Ghana? Is there a specific, uh, uh, um, uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, like excursion that you want to do? Where's the address for that? Same thing with your general generational wealth, right? Hey, cat, I want to make money. Hey, cat, I need more money. What is more money? Because I could put $1,000 into Bitcoin right now. Bitcoin goes up a couple of points and I made money. Is that, did I reach my goal? Right? I want to make extra money. What does extra money mean? Okay? I could go right now and buy Apple at $134 a share. Tomorrow it goes up to $137. I made money. Right? You said your goal was to make extra money. You made an extra three bucks. You reached your goal. But, uh, cat, come on. You know what I mean. You know I don't want to make no $3. Well, what is it that you want to make? Let's get real specific on this. Okay? So it's not about just, hey, I want to make money, generational wealth. What does generational wealth look like for you? For some of you guys, just, and I said this on the live the other day, some of you guys think about the, the income that you make every single year. Okay? Think about that. The income that you make every single year. When I first started my business, and I'm going to be real transparent with you. When I first started my business, I made $27,000 in a year. Okay? Okay? I was, I was out there eating ramen noodles every night, okay? I was out there, and, and when I was trading, I was trading like some of you beginners out there. I was losing money, losing money, and losing more money, okay? Now, $27,000, if I make that in a month, it's like, what did I do wrong, right? And so your goal, another thing is your goal is going to evolve as well. All right. So you want to be as specific with your goal so that as it evolves, your strategy, your thinking evolves with it. So define, hey, cat, I want to make an extra two thousand dollars a month to take care of my rent. That is a goal. Hey, cat, I want to have forty thousand dollars for my child by the time that they're 18 so that they could take care of all four years of college and not worry about um, taking on debt. That is a goal. Hey, cat, I want to buy an income property, all right? I want to buy a, 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 a duplex or a triplex in North Miami, and the average price is 250 k and I'm going to need 20% down in the next two years. That is a goal. Hey, cat, if I can make the same salary at retirement, I would be living good. That is a goal. Okay. Hey, cat, I want to buy a brand new, uh, I want to buy off a, a, a Range Rover and I want to pay cash for it. Actually, that's one of my goals. All right. That's actually my goal. <laughs> All right. I want to, I want to pay cash for my Range Rover. I don't want to owe nobody anything. Okay. I want to pay cash for it. That's one of my goals. So I have a whole account. It's called my Range Rover account. Let's go, baby. Let's get this Range Rover. Okay. That is a goal. Hey, cat. Listen, man, if I could get like an extra $200, $300 a month, that would really allow me some breathing room. I could really take care of some stuff and not be as stressed out. That is a goal. Type in a one if you guys get me. Type in a one if you're picking up what I'm putting down, all right? Type in a one if that makes sense. You, when you say, I want to build generational wealth, good job. Okay, on deciding that because the fact that you decided that you're going to build generational wealth is worth an applause. And I applaud you. But now let's get to work. Okay? Let's get to work. Oh, I want to go to Ghana. Okay, let's get to work. Let's buy the ticket. Right? Let's book the Airbnb. Let's plan out our excursions. That's the same thing. You can, you can yell generational wealth all day long, but until you put it into a plan and until you get there, it's just a dream. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. 
There's a reason why some of you guys don't know what to do. You don't know where to get started because you don't know where you're going. All right. You don't know if you need to exit off of a 90, the exit 93. Maybe there's more traffic. Maybe you should take a local route. You don't know where you're going. And so the market takes you wherever it wants to take you. If you don't know where you're going and you go into the market, don't worry. The market is going to take you where it wants to take you, which is losing money. Okay. All right. I got a bunch of ones here. So number one, what is the first, or actually, let's see, did you guys get it? What is the first step to investing? Whether you're investing with a hundred bucks, whether you're investing with a dollar, whether you're investing with a thousand dollars, whether you're investing with a hundred thousand dollars, what is the first goal? What is, I'm sorry, I just gave it away. What is the first step? What is the first step? Okay, how many goals would you recommend that we focus on at a time? Good question, Victoria. As many goals as you can handle. Okay, let's not have like at one little account for every little thing now. Okay, because some goals can be can all be put into one account. So, for example, like some of my some of my clients that I work with, by the way, oh, I didn't get any of my links for today. I'll post I'll post them um, towards the end. I should have had my Calendly link. Hmm. I'm trying to think how I could do this. But anyway, so uh, those of you who want to work with me, I'm going to put in the link, my Calendly link. Go ahead and click on the link. I do free 15 minute consultations, okay? So we talk about any and everything. And if I can help you within 15 minutes, I give you the formula, you go. If, you, if I can't, then we'll talk about working with me. But Victoria, back to your question. So your question was, um, can we have multiple, multiple goals? Yes. So for example, one of my clients, she has three kids. You know, some of um, one of them's 15, the other's nine and the other's eight. Right. And so uh, there's three different kids that she has. But the goal is to set up her kids for success. Right. She wants to give her kids a head start in life. And so one account is enough. Right. One account. And that's the kids fun or whatever. You know, you understand what I mean? As long as the goal is within the same type of um time frame or the same type of category you don't have to have one account for your Range Rover one account for your kids one account for your earrings one account for your shopping one it's, it's not that serious right we're talking about general goals so let's say you have a retirement goal and then at retirement you want to buy a house or something I don't know you want to buy something at retirement so that could be in that one retirement goal I hope that answered your question Victoria Okay, any other questions? Let's see your goal. Set your goals. Okay, you guys got it. Know your goal for investing. Perfect. Let's move on. All right, then the second step, you're going to decide, all right, am I, oh, before I get to that, okay? Before I get to that, I'm glad I wrote that little note for myself. Second, you want to decide your tax advantages, okay? What are the, you're welcome, Victoria. What are the tax advantages that you want to take advantage of, okay? All right, those of you who are saving for your kids, decide, hey, it's not just have $40,000 for your kids by the time that they're 18, but remember, it's not how much money you make, it's how much money you keep, okay? I'm gonna repeat that. It's not how much money you make, it's how much money you keep. There's no sense of making a million dollars for your kids and just to have to give Uncle Sam 39% of it or 40% or 60% because Biden is talking about bringing up taxes to 60%. I don't know if it's going to happen or not. It might happen by the time that your child's 18. You don't know, right? And so you want to be mindful of the tax advantages as well. Okay? So if your if your goal is retirement, do you know what taxes are going to be like when you retire? Okay? Type in a one if you know what taxes are going to be like when you retire. Type in a zero if you don't know what taxes are going to be like when you retire. Okay? Type in a one if you know what taxes are going to be like when you retire. Type in a zero if you don't know what taxes are going to be like when you retire. Okay? So you want to take advantage. Exactly, Auguste. That's, that's right. Berlin says zero. Okay? Okay? We don't know. Yes, it could it could very well stay the same. I hope it stays the same. But think about all the money that they're printing, all of these stimulus, right? All of the debt from all of the wars from the early 2000s. Think about the population that's about to, to um, su such a huge portion of the population is about to retire, okay? Where is that money going to come from? to be able to sustain the, the, the aging population, to be able to sustain uh, uh, the national debt, to, to be able to uh, uh, sustain all these stimuluses and everything. Where's that money going to come from? 
They're going to keep printing money, right? Taxes. That's how the government makes its money. Most of it's the, the government. Yes, it produces stuff. Yes, it manufactures stuff. But a huge, a huge chunk of the government's money comes from taxes. And so we want to plan for taxes. It's not all about chasing the wins. Yeah, Dogecoin. Oh my God, I made $20,000 on Dogecoin. You better get ready to pay those taxes on Dogecoin. Hello? You ready to pay those taxes on Dogecoin? Do you know what the taxes are? Are you ready for that tax bill at the end of the year? Let's say you actually keep that $20,000. Okay, because a lot of you guys are making twenty thousand dollars in a day, a hundred thousand dollars in a day. Yeah, I made ten thousand dollars. I made five thousand dollars in a day. All right, great. How much of that is left around at the end of the year? Number one. Number two, how much of that is left around in a year, in two years, in five years? There's no sense of making twenty thousand dollars in one day just to turn around in two years is gone. All right. Same thing with your investing. When you're investing for long term, there's no sense of having a great year. Some of you guys are telling me, oh, yeah, last year I made 100 percent of my portfolio. Great. What about five years from now? Is it still going to be the same? Right. So we want to plan for taxes. Now, with taxes, there are two different types of account. OK, you have retire. you can you can trade. You can invest in a retirement account or a brokerage account. OK. They just, they just charged this man 800,000, 800K in taxes on Robinhood. Exactly. That's great. You know what I mean? I'm glad that if he's getting charged $800,000 in taxes, that means he's made a couple of mil, which is great, but he tried to do it on his own. Don't do that, guys. You're not here to build wealth by yourself. Nobody builds wealth by themselves. Don't let these people say self-made. I'm a self-made millionaire. Yeah, I, I, I made my millions by myself. No, nobody's a self-made millionaire. Nobody. That's a myth. That's like a, a, a way of speaking. Like that's hot or that's fire or that's what, what do the kids say these days? I'm old now. <laughs> What's the thing? Um, lit. Doesn't mean the thing's really lit, right? It's just lit. It's just fun, whatever, right? So it's the same thing when somebody sells self-made millionaire. That's just a figure of speech. Nobody does it alone. You want to have a tax professional on your team. You want to have an attorney. Actually, you need to have several attorneys. You need to have an estate planning attorney. You need to have a, a financial planner, advisor, somebody like myself to teach you what to do with your money. All right. I got off on a whole tangent here, but you guys need to hear this. All right. It's not all about how much money, how much money you would make. And it's not all about doing it by yourself. So if you don't know what tax advantages you want to take advantage of, talk to your CPA, talk to your tax strategist, or talk to somebody like myself. It doesn't have to be me. I'm not for everybody. I don't like to work with everybody. My personality is not for everybody, so it doesn't have to be me, all right? When I say these things, it's not to sell you on me. It's to, it's to actually, I not even sell you. It's to educate you that you need a team, okay? So retirement account, brokerage account. Retirement account. Brokerage account. Retirement account can be a 401k, 43b, 457, TSP, Roth IRA, Roth 401k, Roth 43b, right? Traditional IRA. These are all tax codes for retirement accounts. They tell the IRS how to tax whatever money's inside the account. It says, hey, Sasha's $100,000 right there. She's going to pay taxes after 59 and a half. Or it'll say Natasha's 250K right there. She's, she already paid taxes on it, so she'll never have to worry about taxes. That's what those tax codes means. If you want to know more about which tax code is best for you, go ahead and click on the link. I'm going to put it in here, my Calendly link. Uh, uh, go ahead and schedule a free 15-minute session. I'm not going to charge you anything to tell you what tax advantages to take care of. But I want you to be serious enough to actually take action and seek out somebody's help. It doesn't have to be me, but it could be me. Okay. The second one is a brokerage account. Someone asked earlier, what platforms do you use? I recommend you use an investment bank. Okay. A lot of you guys are telling me, cat, I want to build generational wealth. Cat, I want to leave something behind for my kids. Cat, I want to, I don't want to clock in for, for the, for the man anymore. I want to clock in for myself. That's going to require a lot of money. Okay. And so in order to protect that money, because remember, it's not about how much you make, it's about how much you keep. I don't care about your returns. How much did you make? How much did you keep? Uh, I had 100% return. How much of that did you keep? Why does, it, why does it matter if you made a million dollars if you only got to keep half of it? You didn't make a million dollars, right? Okay? 
So where was I headed with that? So yes, you want an investment bank. Well, what about Robin Hood? Robin Hood's so easy. Yeah, Robin Hood is for you to get your feet wet. Okay, yeah. Uh, the, the live is about investing $1,000 with less than $1,000. Yeah, Robin Hood is fine for that. But when you start building wealth, an app is not going to hold your wealth. That is an app. What happens when another app comes and takes them out? What's going to happen? What happens then? What happens when this when there's an outage? What happens when the app needs to be updated and you know your 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 order is pending for 15 minutes and then because it's pending for 15 minutes you lost 10k? Actually, that's a true story from 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 someone that that seeked out my help. Their order was pending on Robinhood for 15 minutes and they lost 10k. Is that a place you want to build wealth in? Guys, I had a whole live on Robinhood. I'm not going to go down that rabbit hole on Robinhood. But if you're going to build wealth, build it on a bank. Build it with something that's FDIC insured. That has protection. So what are some examples? TD Ameritrade, Vanguard, uh, Charles Schwab. I know somebody posted a, a, there's a whole story about how Charles Schwab uh, accidentally deposited like $2 million in somebody's account and they're in trouble for you. What? 1.2, I think it was. And they're in trouble and all of that. Yeah, that happens it, it, with any bank. That doesn't mean Charles Schwab is horrible. It just happened. Okay. So, um, TD Ameritrade, Vanguard, Charles Schwab, Fidelity. Fidelity is amazing guys. Y'all sleeping on Fidelity. I've been sleeping on Fidelity. Okay. Fidelity. Most of your, your jobs, most of your jobs are using Fidelity. Okay. Find an investment bank. It's free guys. Free 99. Free. Let me write that in the comments. Free. Free to open an investment bank account. You don't need to fund it right away. I would like for you to fund it so that you can get started and not stall on it and say that you're going to start investing and then two years go by and you don't do anything, but you can start it for free. Now, the drawback with that is that, you know, Robinhood and Webull and all those little apps here, they give you a little free stock to make you feel good. Oh, I got a free stock. Okay, well, open your Robinhood, get your free stock and keep it moving. Win-win. You get your free stock in Robinhood. You can play around, play around with with a thousand if you want, whatever it is. But your real money, your bill generational wealth money, your I need two point five million dollars by retirement money. The I want to uh, buy a building, a, a ten unit building, which is one of my goals, by the way. I keep talking about it. My Range Rover money is gonna be in an investment bank. Is that clear for everybody? Type in a one if you guys understand that concept. Okay. I have Fidelity, love them. Yes, Linda. Glad you could make it, by the way. Um, another Linda. Hey, we got two Lindas, one with the I, one with the Y. Linda says I love Fidelity. Okay. Um, Angela says I love Fidelity. Nice, nice. Any questions in here? Can't you have a retirement account in a brokerage account? Yes, you can, but you're gonna pay those taxes, okay? So I'm glad you asked that. So with the retirement account, you have several tax advantages. With a regular brokerage account, you're subjected to something called capital gains tax the same thing in real estate i know linda the real estate's your world over here you know what i'm talking about right just like in real estate there's ways around it there's ways around it with stocks too talk to your tax advisor i am not one it's not me okay call one if you need one i do have one on my team but call your tax advisor okay you have capital gains tax which is anywhere from 15 to 20 percent and if you buy and sell the stock within less than a year, you're going to pay income tax. Now, what does that mean? That means that if you made $100,000 from your job or whatever other source of income, and you made another 20 grand into the stock market, you're gonna add that 20 grand to your 100K, and now your taxable income is 120 grand. Okay, that's with income tax. That's with swing trading and day trading. Those of you who are making 20K, 100K a day on Dogecoin and all of that, that's gonna get added to your income tax. And you're gonna pay whatever tax bracket you fall into, that's what you're gonna pay taxes on, okay? Sandy says, my uh, husband and I are taking notes. Thank you so much. My pleasure, Sandy. All right, I got a whole bunch of ones. Okay, nice, you guys get it. Uh, exactly. Talk to your tax advisor. There is sure a way around everything. Yes, guys, I used to date this guy and he told me that this country is built off of loopholes and middlemen. <laughs> yes, I was very young at the time. I didn't really get it, but I get it now. Yes, this country is all about loopholes and middlemen. If you know the middleman and you know the loopholes, well, you're, you can do whatever you want. 
<laughs> you didn't hear that from me, though. Don't go out there doing illegal stuff and saying, Kat said all I needed was a middleman. Okay, relax. <laughs> all right, awesome, awesome. All right, moving on. Now you want to, now that you set your goal and your goal is specific AF, okay? I need this to be specific down to the penny, down to the penny. How much money do you need to make for that goal? Well, Kat, I don't want to limit myself. What if I, what if I say 20,000, but I, I actually end up making 50? Well, you surpassed your goal. Now you have a new goal. Easy. Okay. Now you have your 20,000 that you needed for whatever it was. Now you move on to the next goal. Okay, what's the big deal? Give me to the penny. Stop coming up with excuses. Penny, give it to me to the penny, okay? Number two, uh, decide the tax advantages that you wanna take advantage of. I mentioned retirement. There, also, uh, there are also tax advantages for your kids as well, such as a 529 plan, uh, a custodial uh, Roth IRA, and, and a life insurance program and all of that. If you wanna discuss that, go ahead and book a consultation with me. I'm gonna put in the, um, I'm gonna put in the link in here, okay? All right, and now we're gonna ask, we're gonna ask ourselves how much time do I actually have? Yes, I talked about this on the other live. Yes, I'm gonna talk about it again. Yes, because you need to hear it over and over and over because I work with you guys and I'm like, wait a minute, why is she asking me this? I went over this on my life. Clearly, you weren't paying attention. So I'm gonna say the same thing over and over. Decide how much time you have. How much time do you have? Do you have kids running around the house? Do you have a baby crying, keeping you up at night four or five hours at night? Do you have a husband that is like a baby that needs to be fed and all that other stuff, right? How much time do you have? Do you have a full-time business? When I first started my business and now, I don't have the same time. The same strategies that I was doing when I first started my business is not the same strategies that I'm doing now. Because I don't have the same amount of time. Decide how much time do you have. Uh, Sahadia says, it doesn't have to be me, but I could be me. Katya Nakari, thank you for sharing your knowledge. Oh, <laughs> yes. Um, I need to make an extra 5000 What is that? 5000 5000 monthly. There you go, Christoon. Right down. She said 5000 zero, zero, Right down to the penny. That's what I'm talking about, Christoon. Yes. Okay, so now we can work on that 5,000 because if you know how to make $1,000 a month, guess what? You know how to make 5,000 because all you got to do is add more shares or more contracts, whatever it is that you're buying. That's it. It's really that easy, guys. This stuff is not hard, okay? All right, time to invest or time for set goals. Okay, good question, Michelle. Yes, both actually. How much time do you have until your goal, right? So do you have two years, 10 years, 20 years? Good job. I'm glad you asked that. Yes, how much time do you have until the goal? And how much time do you have to dedicate to that goal? I'm going to repeat that. I'm glad. Thank you, Michelle. All right. How much time do you have until your goal? And how much time do you have to dedicate to the goal? Hey, that should be a song. How much time do you have until your goal? And how much time do you have to dedicate to your goal? I don't even know my own lyrics. Okay. All right. So decide how much time do you have? Be realistic. Don't sit here and say, "Whoo, I'm gonna swing trade. I'm gonna swing trade. I'm gonna, I'm gonna trade cryptocurrency, baby. I'm gonna make so much money." And then you got a baby crying, and you weren't able to look at the chart on time, or you didn't sleep last night, and you missed out on a trade. You're not being realistic. Okay. Now, once you decide how much time you have until the goal and how much time you have to work on the goal, now we're gonna decide: Am I gonna actively invest? Or am I going to passively invest? Do you want to be an active investor? Meaning you're day trading or swing trading, meaning you're buying and sell within a year. Okay, you're getting into Dogecoin at 0 0.002 cents and then you get out when it's a dollar. Or, you know, you buy this penny stock at five cents, then you get out when it's five dollars. Like, what? are you actively trading or are you just buying and holding? You just, ah, y'all over there, you can make your $20,000 on Doge. I'm just going to buy Apple every month. Actually, I'm going to automate it to where there's an automated withdrawal, okay? Automated deposit into my brokerage or my retirement account every single month. And that automated deposit buys one share of Apple every month or one share of Tesla every month or one share of IBM every month or one share of Disney every month or one share of Facebook every month. I'm dropping gems, guys. I hope you're taking notes.
You guys cry about my prices. I'm giving you guys free game right now. I listed a bunch of stocks. Or maybe I'll buy VGT every month. ARKK every month. ARKF every month. VOO every month. VIT every month. I'm sorry, VTI, not VIT. VTI every month. Bitcoin every month. Ethereum every month. Litcoin every month. Right? That's passively, where you don't have to think about it. You can have your baby crying, your husband crying, whoever's crying. You can have all of that in your businesses and your full-time job with overtime and patience and this and that. And your investments are taken... Oh, look, look what the pen did. And your investments are taken care of every month because it's buying the same stuff over and over. Oh, you're buying Apple again? Gotcha. Oh, you're buying Tesla again? Gotcha. Guys, don't sleep on that. That is the power. At that point, passive income... You're taking advantage. Okay, I see that question. I'm coming. You're taking advantage of something called compound interest. Write that in your notes. Those of you taking notes, compound interest. Okay? Compound interest. What is compound interest? Compound interest is interest on interest. Okay? So let's say you had a, 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 a hundred, let's say you had a hundred thousand dollars. Okay, and you made a uh, thirty uh, percent for the year. What's that? Thirty percent is what? Thirty thousand? Let's ask Google. <laughs> I don't want to give you the wrong math. Hey Google, what's thirty percent of a hundred thousand dollars? The answer is thirty thousand United States dollars. Okay, thirty thousand United States dollars. Thank you, Google. Yes, I did the math right. Right. So now, next year, year two, let's say you made another thirty percent. Now, you made 30% of what? 30% of $130,000. Let's go ask Google again. Come on, Google. Hey, Google, what is 30% of $130? Oh, wait, hold on, start over. <laughs> You're watching live. <laughs> you get all the bloopers. Okay, Google, what is 30% of $130,000? The answer is 39,000 United States dollars. So the next year you made $39,000. Okay, so let's say 40. So now you add that to your 130. So now you're making, let's say the next year you made 30% again. Now you're making 30% of $170,000. You guys catch, you guys catch my drift? Type in a one if you're catching what I'm, if you're, if you're understanding what I'm saying. Type in a one. Hey Google. Hey, Google, what's 30% of $170,000? The answer is 51,000 United States dollars. The next year you made $51,000. You guys see? You guys see how powerful this stuff is? You started with 30, then you made 40, then you made 50. That 50 is added onto your 170. Now you're at 210. Let's do one more. Hey, Google. What's a 30% of $210,000? The answer is 63,000 United States dollars. The next year you made 63,000. Now you add that to 210. Now you're at $273,000. You guys see? And as you compound and compound, compound interest gets even more powerful, right? Imagine when you get to a million, what's 30% of a million, right? When you get to 2 million, what's 30% of that? compound interest so when you're passively investing guys don't sleep on passive investing a lot of you guys i know it would be amazing to make twenty thousand dollars today on dogecoin or amc or gamestop or whatever else is hot out there right it would be amazing but what's more amazing is your money making money for you while you sleep while you don't have to worry about making sure that you get in on time on Dogecoin and get out on time because it's going to go right back down, right? That's a lot. I don't know about you guys, but that's a lot more sexy. I don't have to sit here in front of a screen like, oh, my God, I, I need to watch this. Oh, my God, somebody, somebody called me. Oh, man, I missed it. I don't have time for all that. I used to, but I don't have time for all that, okay? What I have time for is that compound interest, okay? Alrighty. So moving on. The next, the next question you want to ask yourself is, what type of asset class do I want to participate in? Okay, so what is the, what is the, the title of this live? The title of this live is how to invest with just $1,000, right? So before I invest, I need to number one, know my goals, 
those of you who are just watching, okay? Number one, what are my goals? And down to the penny. Decide on the tax advantages. Do you want to pay taxes now or do you want to pay them later? Okay? Or do you want a combination of both? All right? Decide on your brokerage account. Yes, Robinhood, Webull, um, Stash, and Acorn. Those are great for beginners. But when you're building wealth, you want to do it in an investment bank. Why? It provides you that security. When Robinhood has, a, has an outage, your $100,000 is not secured. When a Robin Hood has an outage, your order that you're putting in to buy a million shares of this or a thousand shares of that, and it's pending and pending and pending for 15 minutes, that's not secure. When you're buying things on margin on, on Robin Hood, you don't own those shares and Robin Hood can come in and sell all your shares without your permission. Yes, they can do that. It is legal to do that. So please, guys, if you're building wealth, please stay away from Robinhood. I can't say this enough. I had another horror story today where someone lost ten thousand dollars on Robinhood today because Robinhood's uh, um the 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 order that she put in was pending. I'm not gonna say her name. She knows who she is. Ridiculous. No, for not for not on her part, on Robin Hood's part, because that's a rookie mistake. I've done mistakes. Well, actually, I, I haven't gone through that, thank God. But I've done some stupid mistakes in the past that are just like this, right? That cost me a lot of money. But guys, the reason why I teach this stuff is because I don't want you to make the same mistakes I did. Please, guys, I know that free stock is amazing, but it ain't gonna make you generational wealth. Okay? All right, good. And one stock of anything is not gonna make you any type of generational wealth. One share of, you could literally buy one share of something and it goes to thousands of dollars. You still only have one share, okay? That uh, uh, one share is not going to make you a millionaire, okay? All right, cool, 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 cool. The next is you want to de decide whether you want to be an active investor or passive investor. Either you're going to swing trade and day trade or you're going to buy and hold and take advantage of compound interest. Now we're moving on to the asset classes. There are five main asset classes. Dropping knowledge, that's right, Mina. Five main asset classes. Five, 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 okay? Number one is equity. You guys have heard in the, in the finance world, if you're watching CNBC or any of those money channels, you'll hear equity, equity market. The equity market is up. The equity market is down, right? That's, stock. that's just stocks. That's just a fancy jargon, fancy Wall Street jargon for stocks, okay? It is, it is actually ownership. Okay? When you buy a home, you, are, you, you have equity in the home. If you buy the home at $100,000 and it goes to $150,000, you now have $50,000 equity. It's the same thing with a stock. A stock is ownership. I think a lot of you guys are forgetting what is a stock. You guys think that a stock is something that you gamble, that you buy, and it goes up, and it goes down, and you can make some money, you could flip, quick flip, and this and that. No, 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 no. A stock is none of that stuff. Some of you guys, type in a one if you have an S-Corp or a C-Corp. Type in a one if you have a corp, because a lot of you guys have LLCs out there, but type in a one if you have an S-Corp or a C-Corp. Those of you who have nonprofits, you most likely have, an, uh, have a C-Corp, okay? Type in a one if you have. Those have shares in them, and you can actually distribute those shares, okay? A stock is not just something you buy, and then you make money and flip it and this and that. That's not what it is. It is ownership. When you buy one share of a company, you are becoming a co-owner. When you watch Shark Tank, okay? Those of you who watch Shark Tank, when Mark Cuban, Damon John, and all of them, Mr. Wonderful, when they're asking all those questions is because they're going to be part owner of that company. Ownership. That's what a stock is, guys. A lot of you guys are forgetting. That's what a stock is. So you're a co-owner, you're a shareholder of a company. There's two ways to make money with a stock. What are the two ways to make money with a stock, actually? I'm going to ask the audience. What are the two ways to make money with a stock? What are the two ways to make money with a stock? Nobody? All right, let's go. Let's go into the comments here. I'm going to give you guys time. What are the two ways to make money with the stock? Two ways. Okay. Um, I invested 5% of my through my job with Fidelity. Is that the same? Hmm? I invested 5% of my salary.
through my job with Fidelity. Is that the same of what exactly? Uh, Linda with a Y, can you re-ask that question? I'm not sure what you mean by 5%. You said, I invest 5% of my way through my job with Fidelity. Is that the same? I don't know what that means. Can you rephrase that question, please? All right. Robin Hood is not good. Easy to read, but nope. Yeah. Star just. Yes, you're right. Robin Hood is easy. It's easy to get your hands dirty. Some of you guys have never bought a stock before. So Robin Hood is great for that. But when you start um, getting into the multiple six figures, yeah, you definitely want to move your money elsewhere. Okay. Uh, lesson learned. <laughs> yeah. What about Ameritrade? TD Ameritrade. Yes. I talked about that earlier in the live. Yes. I actually use TD Ameritrade. That is my go-to brokerage. Cat giving us some, <laughs> yes. Uh, I don't know what that is. Are you hot, Mart? I don't know. Robert Smiley, if if you're trying to promote yourself, you're just going to get blocked. I don't know what that is. I, this, we're not here for that. Go go do that somewhere else. Um, Einstein says compound interest is the eighth wonder of the world. Yes, that's what I'm talking about. Okay, compound interest. Been hearing about it, but still unclear. Sahadia, yes, compound interest is interest on interest. Okay, if you need to know more, um then reach out to me, okay? Compound interest is my best friend. I keep telling folks they don't listen. Yes, absolutely. I invest a percent of my pay through my job with Fidelity. Is that the same? Yes. It's same of what? I'm I'm still not understanding what you mean it is the same. Same as investing in Fidelity? I, I don't get it. I don't get it. I still don't get it. Um. Okay, how do I... Oh, Valerie, how do I transfer my stocks from Robinhood to the investor account? Okay, good question, okay? So you're going to... First, pick your brokerage. Guys, we might have to have a part two in this video. Actually, I'm going to do that because I've already been talking for about 15 minutes. And I don't like these to be too long because you guys don't watch them. And then you call me and you're asking me the same questions that I talk about. Like, I just talked about this on a live okay, that I tagged you in. <laughs> so um, how do I transfer my stocks from Ramen Hood? Okay. So, um, okay. You're going to pick your brokerage. Okay. Decide whether you want TD Ameritrade. Fidelity, Vanguard, Charles Schwab. Um, what else is out there? Those are the main that I use. BlackRock is another good one, right? Stash is okay. There are some other boutique ones out there, right, that you can use. But decide on a brokerage account, a brokerage firm, okay? Research them. Look at their look at their um their uh their website. You know, uh, play around with their website. Look at the different products. Look at the different robo advisors they have. Look at the different retirement accounts that they have. Look at the different um accounts that they have for kids, all of that, right? Call their customer service, ask them about their products, right? Get a feel for what it's like to work with that bank, with that investment firm, just like you would with, with your regular bank, okay? Once you decided on that bank, okay, you're going to open an account with that bank. So let's say, for example, you decide on TD Ameritrade. I'm just saying, or Fidelity, hint, hint, okay? And so you open an account, a free account, meaning you don't have to fund it right away, okay? Open an account and then call their customer service and say, hey, I have some shares from Robinhood that I'd like to transfer over. Can you tell me how to do that? Voila, okay? Easy. They give you all the paperwork. It usually takes about seven to 14 business days, but literally what they do is they take all your stocks. You don't have to sell them. Okay, they take all their stocks and they place it in the new account. Easy. Your Cash App into a new account. Your Robinhood into a new account. Your Weeble into the new account. It takes about 7 to 14 business days. But you don't have to sell and lose out on your ownership. Hey, because that's what a stock is, right? Okay? You don't have to lose out on that. So I hope that answered your question, Valerie. I hope you're still here. Uh, Sasha said Visa. Yes, Square. Wink, wink, Square, Visa, um, PayPal, Coinbase, wink. Okay, next, next. How do I buy every month? Bree, whatever brokerage account that you're, that you're using, you're going to set up an automatic, automatic um, deposit. Every brokerage works differently. So best thing to do, uh, pick up the phone, call their customer service and say, hey, brokerage person, can you help me set up an automatic withdrawal? Or an automatic way to buy Tesla every month or whatever it is you want to buy. VGT every month, VOO every month, whatever it is, okay? Do you think Dogecoin is a good investment? Here's the thing about investing. You want to understand what you're investing in. Okay, I didn't freeze. I'm just, I'm just like letting that sink in. 
You want to understand what you're investing in. Okay? If you've never heard of the product or you've never heard of the company, why would you want to be an owner of that company? If your friend came to you and said, hey, who asked that question, by the way? Brie, I hope you're still around, okay? Hey, Brie, I, I've, got a, I've got a business that I'm working on and I need $20,000. Are you just going to blindly give them the $20,000? Probably not. You're going to ask them some questions, right? What are some questions you're going to ask them? Hey, what do you do? <laughs> I'm just saying, what type of business do you have? So a lot of you guys are investing into Dogecoin. You don't even know what Dogecoin is. Okay, Dogecoin is a meme. It's a virtual meme of a dog. It was it was created to make fun of Bitcoin because they were making fun of cryptocurrency and saying, oh my God, anybody could create a cryptocurrency. Look at this. I've got a meme of a dog and we're going to call it Dogcoin, but Dogcoin just looks too much like Dogcoin. So let's add an E on it and now it's Dogecoin. It's a meme, guys. Can you trade it and make a lot of money? Absolutely. I have people who've made, I have someone uh, uh, who've made, who's made like six figures on uh, trading Dogecoin, but they know what they're doing. They're actively investing and they're actively investing in their education and they're able to understand how Dogecoin moves. But when you're investing long-term, are you going to buy a meme and pass that down to your children? It's possible. You never know. Maybe that meme will be worth a hundred thousand dollars one day. I don't know. Okay, so the answer is I don't know if that's a good investment because I don't know your goals. I don't know your risk tolerance. I don't know how much time you have. You see, you, you, you see where I'm headed with that question? You guys see where I'm headed with that? Okay, I don't know what's a good investment for you, which is why I cannot give you stock advice. I cannot give you investment advice. I can only educate you so that you make that decision for yourself. So the answer is I don't know if those coins are a good investment for you or not. It's a good investment for some people who have the time to read the charts and understand when it's dipping and then when they understand slippage and understand the moving averages and understand the support and resistance and understand the MACD and understand the Borlinger bands, right? They understand all of that. But do you have the time for that? I don't know. Okay, I'm done. Alrighty. Do, 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 do. Time to invest or time for goals? Okay, I think I caught up with all the questions. All right. Oh, somebody says, can you purchase fractional shares with Fidelity? Yes, yes, yes. That's why I love Fidelity because you can you can purchase fractional shares. Good, um, good job. By the way, guys, okay, uh, let me make an announcement, okay? Guys, we're going to have a part two. Uh, I'm going to try to do it either tomorrow but latest Wednesday, okay? We're going to have a part two on how to invest $1,000, Okay, I dropped a lot of knowledge here. It went on a lot longer. Okay, but let me answer Sasha's question. Okay, so yes, Fidelity does fractional shares. Have you guys ever heard of tokenization? Okay, homework for you guys, all 92 of you watching. Okay, homework for you. Look up the word tokenization. Let me let me go ahead and type it in here. Token. Tokenization. Oh my gosh, I can't spell. And and this this autocorrect. Okay, tokenization. Autocorrect is killing me over here. They keep correcting it. I don't have time for that. Okay? Tokenization. What does that mean? It's essentially you're taking an asset. So let's say this this cup, empty cup that's sitting on my desk here that should have some wine or something, right? No, it's just water. It's not wine. Hmm. It should be wine, okay? <laughs> so so let's say this asset here, okay? You want to sell this asset. You can sell the whole asset. I can give you this, all right? And we're going to do a transaction. So let's say this is $100,000, all right? So if you want it, you got to give me $100,000 and then I give you the cup, all right? Tokenization is a way, yes, exactly. So it's a way to leave the asset alone and sell tokens on it, okay? So that's what fractional shares is. They're selling you tokens on the share itself. You don't own, you're not an owner because you don't have one share, okay? But you're buying a token. Why would anybody want to buy that token? If they think that the value of this cup is going to go up, they're going to buy the token on it, right? Remember a Chuck E. Cheese when you used to have the tokens? Am I aging myself here, right? It's the same thing. So you're going to buy the tokens. You're going to pay the price because you know the value of this is going to go up. And so the value of your token is going to go up. 
And so guys, all of that to say, tokeniza tokenization is slowly creeping in into the stock world. And so everything, everybody's going to offer um, fractional shares. And so this is why I have, I am so serious, right? So serious about ownership. Swing trading is beautiful. Day trading yeah, is stressful, but it can be beautiful if you know what you're doing, okay? But ownership, guys, ownership will build your wealth. When you own a hundred thousand, no, not even, that's exaggerating, a, a, a thousand shares of something, that is way more valuable than making 20K off of, a, off of a meme. Because imagine when tokenization takes over and you actually own this thing, you own it, and now you can sell other people tokens off of it. Imagine the generational wealth that you can build, guys. Build, I, I, let, let me calm down. Stop chasing these quick wins and build wealth. Get ownership, buy shares of a company and sit on it. That's why I say buy Apple every month. That's why I say buy Tesla every month. These companies are too big to fail. They're not going anywhere. Apple is a trillion dollar company. How many other com how many countries do you know of that make a trillion dollars in a year? Maybe two or three? I don't even know. Maybe two or three. I can think of at the top of my head. I know the United States is one of them. Apple is bigger than most countries in the world. So do you imagine what a share of Apple is going to be worth for your children and your grandchildren and your great grandchildren, guys? Stop chasing these quick wins just to turn around and lose it tomorrow and you don't own anything. All right, I'm done. All right, moving on, moving on, moving on, moving on, moving on. Okay, let's see, let's see. Already, 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 already. Uh, watching the stock, like you said, it makes money while you sleep. Yes. Okay. Have you given a de uh, dedicated class on compound interest in the past? I'd like to revisit it. Okay, I'll do that. Actually, let me write that down. We're going to do a live on compound interest. Actually, yes, I'm glad. I was thinking about it, but I was like, what else would I talk about? I guess I could talk about compound interest for the whole for a whole hour I, I or 20 minutes, whatever. Compound interest. Okay, perfect. Uh, you were talking about company in investing. I think you were invested, but not, but don't have to be actively watching. Yes. Okay. Um, invest or trade trading. Di oh yes. There you go. I, I went a whole tangent, didn't I? Sheesh. Okay. All right. So I, I asked you guys, what are the two ways to make money with the stock? Yes. Dividends and selling it. Absolutely. Right. Same thing with real estate. You, there's two ways to make money with real estate. All right. With real estate, you can build equity, right? The value of the house or the value of the building, the value of the shopping plaza, the value of the hospital, the value of the land. Dropping hints, guys. The value of whatever it is that you bought goes up. Same thing with the stock. Because you're an owner, all right? And then rental, right? You can collect rent. You can Airbnb it out. You can rent it to a short-term rental, long-term rental. Same thing with the stock, right? You can collect dividends. Dividends are payments that a company gives you to keep you coming back. They want you to keep investing. Why? Because remember, the company is in the stock market. Why? To raise money. It wants your money. So it needs your money. It needs you to stick around. It needs you to keep investing. It needs you to buy a share every month, 10 shares every month, 20 shares every month. So in order to do that, they're going to say, hey, here's some, here's some extra money. Thanks for being an investor. That's a dividend. Okay. You can also get dividends through ETFs like VOO, VGT, VTI, SPY, QQQ, IWM. These are all, uh, um, all ETFs that pay dividends as well. So you make money with the ETF. Not only are you diversifying your portfolio because you inherit a basket of stocks, you're making money as the value of the ETF goes up and you're receiving dividends. VOO pays about $1.30 something every single quarter. That's higher than most of these companies out there. Other, other stocks that pay dividends are REITs, which we're going to talk about in the part two. REITs are real estate investment trusts. They have to pay dividends. Okay. Alrighty. Um, okay. 
If I'm going, if I'm doing passive investment, do I need to add money every week or every month? Hey girl, Sandy, if you could do every week, I do every week with with my with my cryptocurrency. I buy I buy every single week, sometimes every day as well. But that then that gets into day trading. I do um an automatic payment. Okay, so you could do every week, you could do every month, whatever you want. Actually, every week will get you better prices because remember the stock is fluctuating, right? And so if you just buy once a month, you might buy at when the stock is at its highest. But if you buy every week, you kind of diversify your prices so you get better pricing. So you could do whichever one, okay? Questions, questions, guys, put your questions because I'm about to I'm about to hop off. I've been talking for an hour. Can you buy already? Can you buy? fractional shares but end up buying the share itself yes so if you keep buying fractional shares until you get to one then now you're you're at one share so yes yes so can i buy my way to buying one whole bitcoin yes you can right now you guys are, who are investing in bitcoin you're not buying a whole bitcoin right to buy a whole bitcoin you need to put fifty thousand dollars which you can you can buy a whole bitcoin if you want to actually that's probably smarter Okay, because now you can see when tokenization takes over. Remember, I, hey, you didn't hear it from me, okay? Uh, thanks, I needed the rhymer. Yes, that's the key to stop chasing quick wins. Yes, dropping gems here. How can I afford to buy stocks? You're mentioning the prices are too high. Bree. Okay, yes, I know. This is, um, I know, I know that. How to invest with just $1,000. I know I talked about that. Yes, the prices are, can be high. But you can find value stocks with the same type of value that are affordable. And there's a way to find those. I talked about it in so many different lives. And I talked about it in, in my courses, okay? So if you need more help on that, go ahead and book a consultation. I'll, t I'll teach you how to find those, okay? Uh, do, 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 felt that, yes. Blah, 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 hi, blah, 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 blah. Okay, can you have different portfolios with, within a Roth IRA? Or do you have an IRA for each portfolio? Hmm. Can you? I'm trying to understand the question. Because the Roth IRA is a portfolio. That is an account. So I, I'm trying to see. Are you talking about different goals within the IRA? Yes, you can. Because remember, with a Roth IRA, you can actually use that money for real estate without any tax penalties. So if your goal is to, to own real estate and retirement, you can do both of them within that Roth IRA. Um, IRA with each portfolio. I don't know what you mean by portfolio. How about we we start with that? Um, Angela, I'm not sure what you mean by portfolio. Are you talking about an account? Because your portfolio is everything. Is your real estate, your stocks, your bonds, everything. That's your portfolio. So I'm not sure what you mean, okay? Uh, what did you say DVS? I don't know what that means. DVS? VGT? What? Some of these questions, I don't know. Help me out, guys. If you guys are reading these questions and you get it, please uh, reword it for me because I don't know what that means. What's the lowest and highest I should invest? Sandy, I don't know if you were here in the beginning of the live. Maybe you weren't. Do you see, you guys, those of you who are here, who are here in the beginning, you see why I sound like a broken record? I literally have to say, say the same thing over and over. Sandy, what's the lowest and highest I should invest? I don't know what your goal is. How can I possibly answer that if I don't know what your goal is? If your goal is to buy a million dollar home tomorrow, can you start with just a thousand dollars? Is that realistic? But if your goal is to have a million dollars in 20 years, can you start with a thousand dollars? Absolutely. So you need to start with your goal, my love. I don't know what your goal is, so I can't tell you what's good or not. This is why I always have to repeat myself, guys. People don't listen. I don't know. Maybe she just wasn't here. I'm not picking on you, Sandy. I'm not picking on you. Don't, don't take offense, okay? But I literally have to say the same stuff over and over. I missed the other four asset classes. I got equity, but okay. Yes, Shayna, um, I will do another a part two because I don't have the time for that today. Okay, we're going to do a part two. Part two. What is the difference between share and stocks? There is no difference between share and stock. A stock is ownership in a company. One share is ownership. Okay? It's the same thing. A share is how many shares do you have? So, for example, all right? So, with, with the company, they issue shares to the public because the company wants to raise money. The stock market is a marketplace for companies to raise money. And they do this by issuing shares, okay? So when you, the investor, purchase a share, you are now an owner of the company. 
You now own a stock in the company. Okay, so you are now an owner. It's the same thing. Don't overcomplicate this, guys. No need to complicate it. No need. I know you guys love to dissect every little thing that I say. Oh, that's too simple. Let me dissect it and make it more complicated. No, it's not that serious. It's ownership. That's it. Okay? Do you believe that we should never sell a stock if we're passive investors and if it's been failing for months? Again, Melissa, what is your goal? If your goal is generational wealth, do you want to sell Apple? What's the point of selling it? How is your how are your children going to inherit those shares if you sell it? If your goal is generational wealth and you want to pass down wealth to your kids. Why would you sell Apple? Wouldn't you want them to inherit Apple? Wouldn't you want your great-grandchildren to inherit Apple? So I need to know your goal, right? If your goal is short-term, of course you got to sell the, the stock to be able to, to, to get the money because at that point, it's just equity, right? So if you if you buy Apple right now at 134 and then in two years, it's, it's trading at like $500, which is not impossible because Apple was $700, it split, then it became $500, it split again. So it's not impossible for Apple to reach $500. And you're ready to buy your home. You gotta sell those shares to liquidate your shares to be, have the cash to buy your home, right? And so, yes, it depends on your goal. Broken record, start with your goal. If you add money on stocks that you already bought, I don't know what that means, Marie. Is that a question or a comment? I'm sorry, sis. I was here. You are right. <laughs> See, it's a, like I, I. It's okay though. You guys, I. You sometimes I need to hear the same. My, I'm sure my mom has repeated herself so many times <laughs> to me. So, mommy, I, I feel your pain now. <laughs> I feel your pain. Okay, it starts with the goal. Yes, you said one of the things to give you one dollar dividend per quarter. What is DVS? I did not get the name. Oh. Okay, 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 okay. Cecile, you're talking about the 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 ETF V O O ticker symbol V O O. They do about a dollar something every single quarter in in um in dividends. Yes, they're expensive though. They're about three hundred dollars a share. So yes, uh, uh, if you decide, let's say you want to do uh, you want to uh, invest three hundred dollars every month, so you could buy that every single month. And next thing you know, you've got a thousand shares. And if they're paying a dollar per share every quarter, you got an extra thousand dollars a quarter. That's four thousand dollars a year. Now you your vacation's paid for, right? Or whatever it is. Uh, I don't know what it is that four thousand dollars. Maybe your your property tax is taken care of. That's another thing that you people use residual income for. Right, some of you guys, your property tax is two thousand, three thousand for the year, four thousand. If you have dividends that are giving you that amount, now your 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 uh, property tax is taken care of with your investments. Okay, a stock is ownership. Share is a slice of the ownership. Guys, let's not overcomplicate this. <laughs> okay, yes, a share and a stock is the same thing. That's it. Okay, uh, I'm not offended. This knowledge you're giving us, I appreciate it. Okay, awesome, awesome. Uh, V O O, yes, V O O, yes, V O O, V G T S B Y Q Q Q, yes, thanks, thanks, thanks. Okay, all right, guys. Um, Robert needs to be blocked. I have to block him. Um, Cecile, M illiterate, still considering investing. Thank you, no problem. All right, guys, that's pretty much it. Um, I've stay tuned for part two. Oh my god, it's 9 10. Oh, I've been talking for an hour and 10 minutes. Okay. Um, all right, guys. Uh, part two is going to be either tomorrow or Wednesday. I haven't finalized that yet. We're going to talk about the asset classes and some investment ideas to get you started with less than $1,000. Okay? All right, guys. That's pretty much it. Have a good night. Bye-bye. Happy investing. Bye-bye.